What it do? It's your girl, Zen, with another episode of Close One. I am so excited today. We get to have one of my really good friends, esteemed colleague for a very long time now, almost a decade we've known each other, from Yelp. His name is Josh Gillespie. He's currently the number one and has been the number one enterprise rep at Panadoc for five straight years in a row. He's generated millions of dollars for Panadoc as, and he's actually the number, he was the first hire. Is that right, Josh? At uh, Panadoc? It was like one of the second sales hires and yeah, whatever, first. Yeah, who cares now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to be an awesome week because he is here to share his wisdom, experiences, and uh, I will let you wow. share your piece there. What a, <laughs> thank you. Wow. What a humbling uh, introduction. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for having me, Zen. Super excited. Uh, Sunday, uh, Saturday morning, as you can tell, just getting my coffee here. Cheers, my brother. Uh, that's right. Cheers. There you go. Uh, sales. That's right. I guess we met, what, November 2008, so just about a decade ago. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, so micro bite sized pieces. And okay. why don't you tell us more about what you've done at PandaDoc and then yeah. just share a few stories, maybe yeah. worse stories that you've ever had and how you overcame them. We'll start there. Oh man, how long do we have? <laughs> <laughs> so. We have we have all week, so <laughs> yeah, no, great. Yeah, probably too long. Um, just a little context, I guess. Yeah, I've been uh, just at PandaDoc for now over five years. Um it's kind of flown by, but learned a lot. Panadox, uh, a software application that uh, typically integrates with CRM, and we sell it B2B to salespeople. Um, uh, you know, uh, typically in the uh, 10 to 200 uh, employee cohort. Um, and that's where we've kind of grown our business uh, bread and butter over the years. And now over the last two years, it's really been my job to kind of push the envelope uh, up market and uh, see if we can generate uh, success uh, more at the larger companies, uh, not even really enterprise, but more like mid-market, 200 to 1,000 uh, employees uh, doing, you know, anywhere from, you know, 10 to million to a billion dollars in revenue uh, a year. So that's kind of my focus, which anyone who's been in software, you know, uh, I'm sure can kind of attest is a bit of a challenge uh, when you're operating uh, above, you know, your ICP, your uh, ideal customer profile, uh, which again for us has typically been uh, small businesses. Um, but it's also kind of exciting, right? Because you get to potentially work bigger companies, close bigger deals, um, maybe have more of an impact on product direction at times if, um, you know, you can prove success. So it's a bit of a risky job, I'd say. It's not really for, for everyone and obviously depends on a variety of circumstances that make it viable for me, I guess, you know, having been at the company. Um, a really long time, but yeah, it's fun. It's exciting. Still, uh, still going strong. Uh, still beating the SMB team uh, yeah. on a one-to-one -one ratio. So that's why I guess I'm still alive doing it. And uh, yeah, it's exciting. Panadox had a lot more success the last 12 four, uh, and 24 months. Um, what I'd say getting across the finish line with kind of like smaller implementations that we then are also having uh, more success now expanding uh, mm -hmm. over time. So uh, you know, really trying to uh, build up evangelists, like super champions uh, of our product at larger companies that can help kind of drive a business case forward for at least like a small uh, project um, that then hopefully becomes a larger project. So that's kind of my job. It's a little bit more ethereal uh, in that regard. But I'd say, yeah, today, especially uh, for anyone that's in the software game, whether it's SMB or uh, mid-market or enterprise I think there's a few guiding principles uh, as, you know, a salesperson or, you know, a contributor or even if you're a BD person, whatever you want to call it, um, if your job's to basically bring uh, revenue to the company, um, I think there's a few guiding principles that, yeah, we can, we can talk about today, but yeah. probably wasn't a short enough blurb for you. <laughs> no, that was perfect. Um, so how has it, your conversations changed? I'm sure when you first started at PandaDoc, yeah. We were talking to a lot of SMB clients and increasing the, I guess, employee sizes, the, the types of folks that you worked with. How has that conversation changed from SMB to yeah. 
uh, mid-market to enterprise? I mean, there's different types of conversations and then you're having more of them. So first off is like, a, let's talk about the SMB. You know, really, you know, you should be having a full sell cycle that's less than two weeks because we should have no problem at a small company getting immediately to the, uh, the stakeholders or the decision makers, right? Um, there's probably maybe five of them total at a company with less than 100 employees. Um, we know what their initiatives are because there's no BS. We know exactly what their budgets are because they're probably a smaller company. And, you know, in any, any, any case, we can kind of be more transactional with them, get them in, get them out. Um, do product demos and then go straight to pricing, right? Um, enterprise or mid-market mid or, you know, any company really with more than 200 employees, you can imagine they'll, you know, you're selling more to a steering committee. The software that you're selling is more likely to impact the whole company, more likely to be integrated with other systems at a technical level. So your steering committee is going to consist of probably someone from IT or operations or both, marketing or sales or both. Um, and then, you know, any other variety of internal uh, stakeholders or champions or coaches or decision makers based on uh, what that software is doing and who it touches. Um, especially if it touches everyone, you might have a steering committee of 20 people. So yeah. in those aspects, yeah, you just have to take your game to the next level because you might be having a similar conversation or topic with all the individual personas, but maybe on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and you're really trying to talk to each of the different personas in their own language. So that's where it becomes kind of tricky. You really have to know your product. You really have to know the game. Uh, Cause you know, me talking on a technical call with operations and IT about how to integrate our product with their CRM and you know, uh, user permissions and roles and security access is much different than talking to marketing about you know, the content templates that you know, they wanna have. Um, it's much different than the sales guys who just care about doing the job as quickly as possible with the least, least amount of hassle. It's different than the CEO who cares about you know, the overall impact. Bird's eye view, yep. Yeah, so you have to have all those individual conversations. And I think that's what's tough is because SMB salespeople, we want to have the same, you know, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Mm -hmm. You have to be a little bit more strategic. And then also you can't really um, just go sell straight to the CEO. You have to have buy-in from all those individual stakeholders. You have to assume that each of them is their own little CEO and has to go up to the CEO and say, I recommend this, yes. Otherwise, you're just going to get pushed back down anyways. Yeah. I have so many questions I want to ask you right now. Sure. Um, but before we go into the guiding principles, I want to quickly touch on the SMB side because I'm sure we'll, we will have new AEs joining and watching these videos. What are three tips you would give an SMB rep in order to close those transactional deals in two weeks? Oh. <laughs> 